Today I'm surveying a Sadler 34 sailing yacht from 1990. Sadler made about 260 of their Sadler 34s between about 1983 and 1995. They're well laid up hulls and interestingly they've got a, a polyurethane foam core between the inner and the outer hulls which makes them unsinkable but really gives them a load of buoyancy and a little bit more extra thermal protection so they're quite sought after for that regard. Anyway, down at the back end, doing stone gear checks, and the uh, owner's very kindly fitted some nice new anodes. You can see the shaft anode behind me, but there's also a nice new hull anode, which I thought I'd check the continuity between that and the prop shaft. If you can have an electrical bonding system inside, connecting skin fittings and the engine to the anode, then we check for resistance on the outside and see what we find. So let's have a look. So here we have a two-blade manganese bronze prop, probably by Redis, can't be too sure though, there's no markings on it. Anyway, prop shaft, sending still prop shaft, which then leads forward, enters the hull there, and then just down here you can see the hull anode, a nice freshly applied MG Duff zinc anode. And what's interesting, you want to check the resistance between that and the prop shaft, and I do that using my trusty fluke micrometer. What I've done is I've set this onto the uh, continuity test, and if I touch the prop shaft, you see it gives me a reading of around about 214, 210, ohms so it's well con it's clearly connected internally the question is i wonder if the wires are in poor condition judging by that resistance i would expect that to be a lot lower than it is and it's quite stable so there's clearly a connection there but i suspect it's not good so we'll have a look inside and we'll see what we find so here we are inside the back end of the engine you can see just above my multimeter the red crocodile clip is on the anode stud then if i go to the other end here and i press on the prop shaft I get roughly the same reading, around right about 120 ohms. If I then move sort of back up the train, so to speak, this is where the anode wire is connected to. Ah, oh, there we go. That's giving me a very good low resistance reading of one ohm on the wire itself. So the wire is coming to the back of the gearbox here, attached to the throttle body plate. There we go. That's low resistance. And it goes into here. What you can't quite see down here, here is the rubber seal between the gearbox, output flange, and the coupling. And that's rubber, so there's nothing there. So as soon as we get onto the body of the thing, we get back to our rough reading of 120 ohms-ish. So there we go. So the problem is, the location of this connector wire is protecting the engine. And there's a cable going the other way to the P-bracket, but that leaves the prop and the prop shaft unprotected. Anodes are fitted to help reduce the rate of galvanic corrosion in the important parts of your boat. The stern gear, the rudder fittings, the prop shaft, the prop and everything else. You can see from the old ones that the owners taken off previously that they were part painted at the last time the vessel was antifouled and putting paint on an anode greatly reduces its effectiveness. So always avoid doing that if you can. Sometimes you can mask them up or rub soap over them then the soap washes off once you've finished painting. Anyway, the higher resistance between the um, gearbox and the prop shaft probably explains why the shaft anodes are worn in preference in some ways to the hull anode, which is quite an interesting observation. Having a bonding system inside is good, not essential on all vessels, but certainly can work well on some, but it's important to make sure that it's set up right so that all the parts that are connected are at the same resistance potential. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, check out this video here where I found wasted anodes on a narrowboat and what that meant for the hull. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.